Are you struggling during the apocalypse? Well, don't worry. Our volunteers here at SDRL are here to help. Why not put those worries aside and indulge in conversation here at Zello's number one hub of minds around the world? Put the apocalypse behind you and relax and unwind. And remember, SDRL is here for you. Why not key up and speak your mind here at SDRL? Good morning, SDRL. Here's some news from around the world. Scientists have just discovered a fossilized dinosaur fart. They say it's a blast from the past. Archaeologists have excavated giant stone walls in Costa Rica. In reminiscence to the effective power Apple glitch, which would permanently crash any iPhone when the text is received, a YouTube comment has been discovered that crashes YouTube video pages. The comment, which has Zalgo-styled text that reads HF Loader Redundant, then GD with an ace of spades and a flame symbol at the end, like the effective power attack, it is theorized the text exceeds the memory of devices when loaded, making any video page on YouTube unplayable if the comment is posted. If you do get this comment on any of your YouTube videos, Edge Explorer is the only browser which will load the page. The video will not work, but you will be able to then delete the comment and fix the page. My theory is that due to multi-directional languages, code is able to be written into pages even on huge websites like YouTube. For instance, if you tried to post basic HTML on YouTube comments, the code will not render. However, if you open the HTML code whilst concluding codes on the page, you can then use a language like HTML written in a language in reverse to balance the code of the page holistically. The exploit basically means that any page on the internet is vulnerable. The code means that in the future we may be able to do nothing but fight back in our direction of code or balance the code in both directions. Otherwise, anyone with a bit of brains may be able to inject code into pages. If it works on pages, it works on servers, and this means the whole domain system is vulnerable. One day, we may go online to find that a hacker has taken the entire enom system, which is basically all the current owners have done. Even though we may buy URLs and own domains, we don't actually own anything. We are buying into piles upon piles of code that by brute force own URLs. It may be illegal to use these sort of exploits, but it is the very same exploits that enable the current owners to control the systems. Please watch out for the HF Loader redundant YouTube exploit and let's hope YouTube patched the floor soon. A musician has been sentenced to 17 years in jail after he used Facebook to control and manipulate schoolgirls before he raped them. Cassius Posey, aged 29, from Leicestershire, raped at least five girls with reports saying he tied up the children before raping them. With 19 crimes being recorded, one victim became pregnant at 14. A new project which aims to provide shelter for stray animals has been developed. The shelters are attached to outdoor walls and provide a simple roof for stray animals and places to sleep when the weather is bad. Ukraine's president has said more evidence of civilian killings, rapes and torture has been found, with some accounts of Ukrainians' tongues being cut off by Russian invaders. Russia launched its military offensive against Ukraine on February 24th, causing the world's fastest refugee crisis, with more than 4.3 million fleeing to neighbouring countries. At least 1,500 civilians have been killed so far, according to the United Nations, which fears the real number to be higher. Rishi Sunak's wife is said to now be paying income tax on her overseas income despite her non-dom status after the tax avoidance became mainstream media earlier this week. British Cycling has banned trans cyclists from racing whilst they rework their policy which is unfair on all women riders after Boris Johnson said biological men should not be competing in female sporting events. Will Smith has been banned from the Oscars for 10 years. Ricky Gervais joked that hopefully he'll only do six with good behaviour. Another person has added, why is it okay to make fun of male baldness? Councils are refilling potholes every 19 seconds, but lack of funding puts larger repairs out of reach. 
police in Burnley have arrested a school teacher on suspicion of sexual activity with a child. The Kinder Surprise Factory behind the Salmonella cases has been ordered to close. A pair of Russian missiles has struck a railway station in Kramatorsk, killing at least 50 people and injuring at least 87 others. At least 12 soldiers and 4 paramilitary fighters have been killed and 21 others have been injured during an attack at an army base in Burkina Fasno. The Food and Agricultural Organization's food price index has increased by 13% in March to an all-time record of 159.3 points amid fallout from the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The price of vegetable oils has increased by 23% and the price of cereals increased by 17%. Japan has expelled eight Russian diplomats. Two defendants in the case of an apparent plot seeking to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer due to her COVID-19 policies in October 2020 are acquitted by the jury of the charges of conspiracy to kidnap. The trial of the other two defendants ends in a hung jury. The Russian military of justice has revoked the registration of 15 foreign organizations including Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch and the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. No reason is given, but the revocations come days after Human Rights Watch reported on war crimes committed by Russia during the invasion of Ukraine. And HD1, the farthest known galaxy, is discovered 13.5 billion light years away from Earth. That's it for the news roundup this morning. We'll be back on later on in the day. And before I go, I have here for you a psalm of the day, Psalm 43.3. Lord, please send me your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Thank you for that, Paul. Global current events. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky announces that the city of Mariupol has been completely destroyed, leaving the death toll to be tens of thousands. Governor of the Nef, Oblast, Pavlo Karulenko, says that three people have been killed and eight more injured by rocket attacks in the region. Two Israelis of the Breslova group are shot in Nablus after they attempted to enter through an unmanned checkpoint in order to pray at Joseph's tomb. Fire damage is discovered inside several chambers at tomb and is attributed to Palestinian rioters who were throwing stones at tomb two days prior. Five people are injured when their car is stoned in East Jerusalem. A Palestinian militant is shot dead after throwing an incendiary device at Israel's security forces in the West Bank. The spokesman for United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres says that the Secretary General is appalled by the increasingly high number of casualties, including women and children. He reiterates that children must never be the target of violence or put in harm's way. The Israeli Defense Forces must exercise maximum restraint and use of lethal force only as a last resort when it is strictly unavoidable in order to protect life. We will continue to work with all sides to de-escalate that situation. Authorities say that 50 people have been killed and 70 others have been kidnapped in a series of attacks in Plateau State, Nigeria. In response to the S&P's lowering of Russian foreign debt rating to SD selected default, Finance Minister Anton Silvanov tells pro-Kremlin newspaper Is Vestia that the government is preparing to sue in order to force the investors to accept their payments. At least 25 people are killed during floods and landslides caused by tropical storm Meje in the Philippines. At least three people are killed at the Tricus Hills Roadway in Diogar District, Jharkhand, India. Philadelphia reinstates their indoor mask mandate amid an increase in the number of cases in the city, becoming the first major US city to do so. The mandate will take effect on April 18. Shanghai has eased their lockdown in several areas of the city, despite recording a record 26,000 cases of COVID-19. In Chile, Santiago, Intendant Claudio Orego announces that the national cattle will ration water for the first time in its history as the country enters its 13th year of drought. Islamic State supporter Ali Harvey Ali is convicted of the murder of British Conservative MP for South End West David Amy. Ali is also convicted of preparing acts of terrorism. British Conservative MP for Wakefield Imran Hamed Khan is convicted of sexually assaulting a 15 year old boy in 2008. Over 100 Pakistani lawmakers resigned in protest of the no confidence motion against Imran Khan, former Prime Minister of Pakistan. A mass grave of Ukrainian civilians is discovered near the village of Buzova. Oblast. Prosecutor General of Ukraine, Arena Ben Ed Iktova, says that 1,222 bodies have been discovered so far in Kiev Oblast. Two people are killed and several others are injured by Russian shelling in the town of Derhachi, Charkiv Oblast. The Dnipro International Airport is completely destroyed by Russian missile strikes. Five people are injured. The Israel Defense Force perform a raid in the West Bank of Jenin. Two brothers of dead Palestinian militant Rod Hazem are injured. An Israel border police officer is injured in a stabbing attack at the entrance to 
to the cave of the patriarchs in Hebron that attacker is killed. A Palestinian woman is killed in confrontation with the Israel Defense Forces in Busan. A man is killed after reportedly throwing a Molotov cocktail at Israeli forces in al Qaeda. Bethlehem Governorate. Twelve people are killed and ten more injured during a mass shooting at the Tanji and Bur Tajid villages in West Arthur, Sudan. The Polisario Front suspends all relations with Spain. Two people are killed and ten others hospitalized in a mass shooting in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, United States. Voters in France go to the polls to elect their next president. Incumbent President Emmanuel Macron wins the first round with 28.1% of the vote and will face Marine Le Pen, who has obtained 23.3% of the vote in the second round on April 24. Chiba Lotti Marines pitcher Rocky Sazake throws a perfect game, the first in 28 years and the 16th in MPB history, tying the existing MPB record by striking out 19 batters and setting a new record by striking out 13 consecutive batters. American professional golfer Scotty Scheffler wins the Masters Tournament of the Augusta National Golf Club in Augusta, Georgia. The win is Scheffler's first win at the tournament. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky says that Ukraine is still ready to continue peace negotiations with Russia. Four people in Uleda and one person in Novom were Kalibri. Marinka Rayon are killed by Russian shelling. Two people are injured. Ukrainian Minister of Reinterrogation of Temporary Occupied Territories, Irina Bereshka, announces that President Zelensky has ordered a third prisoner exchange with Russia, with 12 Ukrainian soldiers and 14 civilians returning to Ukraine. Israeli soldiers said the refugee camp in Jenin, where the perpetrators of the Tel Aviv shooting live. Palestinian Islamic Yad member is killed and 13 other people are injured. In retaliation for the Israeli raid, a group of around 100 Palestinian rioters vandalized Georgia to in Nablus, the gravestone and some other objects are damaged in the attack. The state-owned Syrian Arab news agency says that Israeli airstrikes have hit the northwestern city of Mashiach. No casualties have been reported. Magnitude 5.2 earthquake has hit the town of Turj in eastern Turkey. No casualties or serious damage are reported. At least 13 people are killed and 10 others are missing after two boats carrying African migrants sink off the coast of Esfat, Tunisia. At least 19 people have been rescued. The Ministry of Hajj and Umrah announces that Saudi Arabia will lift their COVID-19 restrictions restrictions on the Hajj and will allow 1 million people to participate in the event for the first time since 2019. Azerbaijani Healthcare Minister Tamer Musayev announces that Azerbaijan will develop their own domestic vaccines in combat to COVID-19. U.S. Agricultural Secretary Tom Vilsack has tested positive with COVID-19. EU High Representative Josep Borrell announces that the European Union and Italy will resume their diplomatic operations in Kiev after temporarily relocating to Elvis. Iran has sanctioned 15 Americans with ties to the Trump administration and Libyan Army officials in eastern Libya have announced their refusal to take part in the 5 plus 5 Libyan Joint Military Commission urging warlord Khalifa Haftar to cut off oil exports and transport to the western half of the country. And listen, this is Dan's Ring Link.